You know, ladies and gentlemen, hockey fans of a certain age who grew up in the 1960s and 70s learned about this player like Americans learn about Thomas Jefferson and Andrew Jackson, George Washington and Martin Luther King, all the heroes of the the of of the revolution uh, basically the modern era the roosevelts but for hockey fans in canada hockey is life in canada and the stories about this guy if you heard them back in the day you said to yourself what it would be like to see this player against ken dryden or patrick waugh or tony esposito what how many how much would he score in this league in this point in time and punch broadbent were it not for his time in the first world war would have been the number one hockey player of the 1910s and the 1920s but by the time he came back his skills were basically used to uh, defend freedom internationally but Harold Lawton Harry Punch Broadbent uh, was the person that everybody wanted to see now, he played with the Senators, where he won several Cups, Montreal Maroons, where he won one, and the New York Americans. He played the NHA and the NHL between 1912 and 1929. He won the Stanley Cup four times during his career, three times with Ottawa, and once with Montreal. Again, he's also regarded as one of the greatest power forwards, and maybe the first in NHL history. Now, inducted to Hockey Hall of Fame, 1962, the native of Ottawa was 5'7", but get this, 183 solid pounds. The right winger had a, a strong right shot. And Broadbent uh, had been a family man until he enlisted in the Army. He had married one Lita Fitzsimmons and had one daughter Sally Ann. But in the summer of 15, Broadbent enlisted in the Canadian military to serve in the First World War. He was in the Royal Regiment of the Canadian Artillery and was promoted to Bombardier in October 1916. In March 1918, he was awarded the Military Medal for his service in the First World War. Now, a January 2734 article on Broadbent in the Montreal Gazette by writer D. A. L. MacDonald says he was called Punch because of his round chubby face, which would puff up like a Billiken charm doll when he smiled. And Harry, of course, is uh, short for his, uh, his given names. Now, early in his career, Broadbent made waves by playing for amateur teams in the Ottawa region. The Ottawa region at the time was just as good as the NHL and the NHA, or what would become the NHL. He made his pro debut with the Ottawa Senators of the NHA in 1912, being paired on a line with the legendary Jack Dara. He was seventh in, league, in the league in scoring his rookie year, and while hobbled with injuries the next, was fourth in scoring the following campaign. He did score three goals in the Stanley Cup final against the Millionaires in 1915 before going off to war for three and a half years. When he returned from the war in January 19, he played the remaining eight games of the season for the Senators, who by then had joined the NHL. With the forwards Frank Neighbor and Cy Denini, he starred for the Senators, which in the interim again had joined the NHL for six more seasons playing for three Stanley Cup title winners. Though he's a holdout for most of the 21 season, he came back to win the league scoring title in 22, would get this 32 goals in 24 games. He also set a record uh, by uh, that season by scoring goals in 16 consecutive games. The streak began during a one nothing rout of the Cavs on December 24th, and uh, to the delight of Maple Leaf or... Uh, the Toronto fans last true to a 6-6 tie with the Habs on February 15th. In 1925, along with veteran teammate Clint Benedict, he was sold by Ottawa to expansion Montreal Maroons. Broadbent uh, was the Maroons' leading scorer that first campaign, including a five-counter game against the Hamilton Tigers. In his second season with the Maroons, the team won its first Stanley Cup championship against, guess who, the Ottawa Senators. He was traded back to the Senators in 28 with cash for Hooley Smith, and eventually played for the Americans in 29 and retired after a year, uh, only scoring one goal for NYA. Now, he finished career with 172 goals and 58 assists in 360 pro games. After his playing career, he coached for several years in the very, very strong Ottawa City Hockey League, winning the championship in 33 with the Ottawa Rideaux, like after Rideau Canal.
He was elected again to the Hall in 62. Now, he broke in in 1909 with the Ottawa Emmets of the OCHL. He played for the Ottawa Seconds of the OCHL, the Hull Volans of the NOVHL, and the Ottawa Cliffsides of the IPHU uh, in the playoffs. Now, 1911, he played with the Cliffsides, uh, who also were uh, in the IPAHU. Now, in 1912, he played with the Ottawa New Edinburghers of the IPAHU with 20 goals in 10 games and 7, ga- seven goals in 4 playoff contests. Now, with the Senators goalie game pace in 13, 20 goals, very uh, very tough on the assist back then, 20 goals in 20 games. 1914, 13 points in 72 games. 1915, he really opened out 27 points in a regular season, 24 goals with 3 goals in the playoffs. Now, with the Senators in 1919, when he returned, Earned seven games in a regular season, uh, seven points in a regular season, and um, including uh, four goals with four points and five po- uh, games in the playoffs. Now, with the Senators in 1920, he scored 19 goals in a regular season and four in their, uh, had four games in their Stanley Cup run. 21, four goals with the Senators in a regular season and two goals in the Stanley Cup playoffs. 22, we had 32 goals in a regular season, one, one assist in two playoff contests. 23, 14 goals in a regular season, and in the Stanley Cup playoffs that year, he had six big goals in six games. 24, he had 13 points in a regular season, including nine goals. And in 26, with the Maroons, solid 17 points in 36 games, and one goal in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and two points in a regular, two goals in a regular playoffs. 27 in Maroons, nine goals and five assists for 14 points. Senators, he had three goals in 28 and 29, a rough season, he's last, one goal. Uh, and the four assists for five points, 44 contests. So NHA, 50 goals, 57 games, 60 points, a big 191 minutes in penalties. NHL totals, 121 goals, 172 points, 564 minutes in penalties. And the Stanley Cup, a big nine goals in 18 games. Now, again, NHL scoring leader in 22, Stanley Cup champion 2021, 23, 26. NHL consecutive goal scoring streak 16, Hockey Hall of Fame in 1962. Now, again, he, uh, when he came back, he signed as a free agent with the Senators. Now, December 30th, 1920, in a very controversial move, his rights were transferred to Hamilton from Ottawa, uh, Ottawa by the NHL with Sprague uh, Claghorn, but Broad, uh, Broadbent and Claghorn were too straightforward. Now, December 4th, the rights were traded to the Canadians by the Hamilton Tigers for cash, and Broadbent refused to report. That's strike two. Now, February 21st, 21, his rights were returned to the Senators by the NHL because he couldn't work it out. Now, October 20 to 24, he was traded to the Maroons by the Senators for the cash, the, uh, the cash outlay. October 7, 27, he was traded to the Senators by the Maroons with 22500 for Hooley Smith. October 15, 28, traded to the Americans by Ottawa for $10,000. Now, the big uh, thing that a lot of us remember was the interesting incident when he was fined $25 by the NHL for trying to start a fight in the penalty box during a game with the Montreal Canadiens. And of course, on Halloween, so typical of a very, very scary player, he announced his retirement in 1929. Now, uh, I consider him a top history. He was the example of the strong power forward that didn't really get a major dominance. But 183 pounds, and like I said, uh, didn't want to wake him up. He could score a goal. He could make a hit. Uh, allegedly, he didn't like referees. Well, who, 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 who likes a referee? So, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a chance, read up on some of the write-ups that uh, Fischler and the other writers have did on Punch Broadbent. The very, very interesting anecdotes. And his military career is legendary because he didn't have to go fight overseas. He could have got an exemption, being a married person, or and you know, being a uh, you know. He could have pulled strings, but he wanted to serve. Tremendous player. So, if you're if you're seeing another hockey player punch each other on the ice, I know they're not thinking of him, but everything comes back to punch. Punch defended his teammates. He was a good, solid player. And when he found a way to score, he could do it. Thanks for listening. Bye.